H.T. and Mr. Mohanty for uh, inviting me to this forum. And as usual, I have the same topic, which I have been talking for a few years now, pro-poor transport policy, and this time trying to link it towards the green economy. So uh, I thought that first let us see what green economy we want to talk about, but I think transport is more about access to goods and services for all inhabitants. And then we will see does this really translate into green economy also, because for any fundamental thing, why for any policy maker or any at individual level, we are looking at access to goods and services for all inhabitants. And then, as the first speaker had discussed, now the reality of 21st century is that there is a lot of global concern of greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide. But I think local health concerns continue to dominate our local policy agenda. Just a quick reminder to what is urban India, and then I will try to link my uh, arguments to urban India. Uh, we have changed somewhat from 2001 in, uh, according to 2011 census. The reason I have circled this numbers in blue is the number of small towns according to our urban uh, new census has really increased much more than the number of uh, mega cities or the cities with more than 1 million population. Uh, the numbers which were uh, number of towns were 5,000 earlier, it is now nearly 8,000. And we have, so what I'm trying to understand from here is that our small towns have really doubled and tripled in numbers. And what we do to our transport systems and how we move people in these areas is going to have huge implication for green economy. And most of the transport Planners and all our policies have not really focused on these small cities, what is happening. Most of our focus has been Delhi, Calcutta, Mumbai, and then the second tier cities which are 5 million plus population. And therefore all our discussions have been centered around either uh, metro systems or investing in formal bus systems. So since the topic is that I have to relate to urban poor, so I just thought, let's remind ourselves who are the urban who are the slum dwellers, the pavement dwellers, living on the urban peripheries, squatting on vacant lands, employed as casual laborers, recent migrants to rural areas, seasonal migrants, and those with no or low education and no or low skills. So we have to now understand what is their proportion, what is their role in the cities and urban transport, and how we fulfill with their needs. So this first data I'd like to share with you. This is the, the numbers we collected in 2001. Uh, very detailed surveys done in Delhi. And the map of Delhi, you see little stars. Each little star is informal settlement of slums in Delhi. And then we try to understand that how people are moving, is low income people living in the slums, and how do they compare with people who are living right next door. But they are in the formal colonies, planned settlements. And uh, striking differences you can see, the uh, high income people basically are traveling by bus, two wheelers and cars. And when we look at the low income people, obviously the car numbers don't exist there. And uh, 22, uh, you have 40% people moving on bicycles, uh, some 22% people walking and then we have 31% moving by buses. So this is how I think what is important to remember is that these people live in close geographical proximity. They are not living very far from each other. They are using the same transport infrastructure that we designed. But the trip patterns are very different. Then now recently, in 2011, again now we have gone and uh, uh, one of my PhD students, uh, SSL and Salma, is doing a very detailed work on this, trying to understand how people in some areas are uh, moving and what are their activities. This is a very detailed activity diary. So what I just want you to flag here is, 10 years later the numbers, the trends are not very different. In fact, now we are trying to understand within slums, the patterns are different between employed and unemployed people. And I think all the graphs that I flash here in very quick succession, 
you would find bicycle and walk dominating and all other modes are hardly existing. As far as employed people in slums are concerned, people are taking buses also. And if you see unemployed, almost 87% people are just walking. Let's look at the difference between uh, genders, females and males. There is a huge difference. Even employed females, 86% are walking to work. And you look at males, 34% are walking, bus and bicycle. This is the dependence. So I think most important thing now we have to understand, when we talk about pro-poor policies, we have to focus our attention on pedestrians, walk, uh, bicycles and buses. Actually, there is no other mode which is really serving. And in 10 years, our economy has grown, per capita incomes have grown, we are growing at 7% per annum. But the numbers which show very detailed, based on detailed work, patterns for this group has not changed much at all. It remains the same. So now let us see what is low carbon transport, or that is what I translate into green economy also. So we are here looking at desirable level of mobility, which has least carbon emissions and maximum accessibility. This is what we are trying to do in low carbon transport economy. That means, I think some of the numbers were shown by the first speaker also, we have to focus on non-motorized transport, which is bicycles, walking, and of course then public transport systems. So this probably may be familiar to a lot of you. How do we really control our emissions from transport sector? We look at trans the kind of fuel which is being used, fuel efficiency, load factor, that means how many people are using and what distances they are traveling, uh, and how many times people are traveling, so that's their lifestyle. I think only new information that we had, had to add to this, uh, uh, the way of calculating is that when we look at different modes, we have to consider the life cycle cost of infrastructure modes. So far we have been looking at only these other cells and it's very important to include because for CO2 emissions, life cycle numbers actually throw some really surprises, especially when we start comparing road versus rail system or any system which includes heavy infrastructure. So there has been a lot of discussion on fuel economy. We have standards, regulations, all kinds of industry government partnerships. We have looked at alternate uh, fuel vehicles, different technology vehicles. And uh, I think what we really have to start looking at now is, especially when we talk about pro-poor, because they are already, in a way, low carbon transport. They are dependent on, as we saw, walking and bicycling and public transport. So what more is required in terms of policy? Looking at what is our land use policy. How are we organizing our urban transport systems? And what choices people are making based on the kind of systems we are deciding? So I think this is where the blue circle shows this is where we have to really start focusing when we want to make link between pro poor policies and transport policies. So four standard scenarios that we can start generating for low carbon transport or green economy. We can talk about improving non-motorized transport, which, in, which should include preserving right-of-ways, policy changes, investments, and uh, then we can talk about urban structures, which includes land use and shelter policies. A lot of discussion is required here, because our current policy is in the wrong direction. Improving public transport, uh, of course. Then we are talking about change in operation plans, taxation policies, investment trends, etc and technological changes. I think out of these four scenarios, this is the only quadrant where major work and investment and attention has been focused. And if I link with my previous discussions here, the numbers I have shown, this has nothing to do with pro-poor or inclusive. So I think if we are serious about inclusive transport, which is one of the main ingredients, we talk about sustainable transport, we really have to pay attention to the other three quadrants and not just